Now, in 2009, the archipelago of Mayotte, nestled in the Indian Ocean between Madagascar and the coast of Mozambique, voted in a referendum to become France's newest overseas department. Many hoped that that change would not only increase wealth and development, but also help the territory avo avoid the violence that plagued the nearby Comoros Islands, which adopted for independence in the 1970s. Well, some 13 years on from the vote, though, violence in Mayotte is seemingly worse than ever. Local officials warning that it's even on the edge of civil war following days of violence between rival gangs. For more, Estelle Yusufa joins me here on Set for Perspective. She is a lawmaker from uh, Mayotte. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, so can you first just give us a panorama of, what, of what's happening? Um, I think it's first very important to precise that uh, Mayotte has been French since 1841, so more than a century and a half. And yes, we voted to access to a new status as a French overseas territory uh, that actually enshrined them in enshrined us in the French constitution. Now, since then, the Comoros, which actually claim sovereignty on Mayotte, we believe that uh, the Comoros have started a migration war and sent thousands of migrants uh, from their own island that came to Mayotte and now have started to pillage, kill, and start violence and foment violence. The problem for us is that it's mostly minors, uh, people who are underage, between 10, 12, 13 years old, armed with machetes, uh, bats of baseball, you know, anything that they could put their hand on, rocks. And then they attack people on the roads, our kids going to school, they burn businesses, they burn houses. and the police forces seem powerless. We're talking about hordes of hundreds of kids who are dangerous. Now, one can say they are children and they are in danger, but now they turn uh, to become dangerous for the population. And we've called for help for years. In 2018, uh, Mayotte came to a standstill because of a large social movement demanding security. And here we are in 2022 uh, with an escalation in violence. Now the, the, the youth is attacking our children with machetes going to school. They enter the school buses. Uh, we now have portions of the island which are totally blocked. Um, we see businesses, civil servants, families fleeing the island. They decide that enough is enough and they leave the island. So we've reached a point where we're actually convinced that um, the population will decide to take the matter in their own hands because the authorities don't do enough. And for me, that's the worst because we've called for help and we don't see that Paris takes it seriously. The interior minister takes it seriously. That's for sure. And, and we agree that sending reinforcements is crucial, but we also need more money for the Justice Department so that those who are arrested are actually taken to jail. And we also need to have a massive effort from our diplomacy to actually uh, start a tough discussion with the Comoros to say enough is enough. And we also need to have the Minister of Defense deploy a maritime ship between the Comoros and Mayotte. The situation has been has been a long time in the making. What what are what are the root causes other it, uh, other than just migration? I mean, it, it's it sounds to me like it's uh, more complex uh, than than just that. What's what's led up? I to the think that you would today? want a more complex explanation, but the situation is pretty simple. Eighty percent of the cases judged in our tribunal are with foreigners. Eighty percent of the inmates in our prison are foreigners coming from commerce. The situation has exploded in less than a decade, meaning that we saw the influx of migrants going from a hundred of people in the early 80s to now more than a hundred people a day arriving by boat, plus 12,000 births per year in our only hospital, meaning that we have to build um, a class each week to follow with the demographic explosion that we are suffering. Now you would say, good, you have babies. 
well, 80% of the babies being born in Mayotte are from commerce. So, no, it's not that complex. It's just that we are 375 square kilometers. We are limited space with limited resources. We cannot absorb such an influx in such a limited time. I say that France is, uh, that, that Mayotte is France's Lesbos or Lampedusa. We are a hotspot of migration on an island that is suffocated under the influx of population. All our public services are completely saturated. We just have one hospital uh, during the pandemic, during the, the COVID crisis, uh, the country discovered that we only have 11 um, intensive care unit for half a million people. We are a, a territory that is extremely poor and is now overwhelmed by the migration crisis. And I think that the violence, what we are all really saddened by is that we saw that crisis coming because many of the migrants leave their children behind when they are arrested. And we now have more than six to 10,000 people underage with no supervision that have grown on their own, that are literally enraged by adults and now organized in large gangs um, well, so far, they it, don't have weapons, but they use machetes, and they still are dangerous. Perhaps, if I may, some of the complexity lies in, in what you, you just touched upon in that response there, which is that there are also structural issues, things like access to water, social services. There is a, an issue of poverty on the island. Which has, were not pre-existing. Well, has, has the territory been forgotten by France's central government since becoming a department in 2009? No, it was before. <laughs> it's been French since 1841. Uh, so, yes. Well, just the because fact, the since fact, it came a department. Fact, the, sorry? Since it came a department in, two, in 2009. That's just the status. But that doesn't change the obligation of Paris. It should have been uh, that Mayotte has enough roads, have enough water sanitation, enough water production, period, regardless of whether or not we're a department. Because... I mean, the confusion there would be for foreign viewers to think that the department changing anything changes anything in our daily life. That's just an administrative status, but that's not different. I would think for American viewers, not different from Puerto Rico to Hawaii to any other state of the Union, the American Union. But that doesn't change what the federal, the central government has to do for that territory. And in that regard, uh, we find that that distinction between the 10 years that uh, Mayotte became a department is actually the shorter view on a much longer term project, a problem, which is that, yes, Paris has underfunded Mayotte, that the infrastructures are not there, but the crisis is much more acute because of the demographic boom. Uh, if we may, we only have a couple of sure. minutes left, unfortunately, but uh, just to move on a bit, despite rhetoric perceived by many as racist or Islamophobic, Marine Le Pen obtained a rather staggering 59% of the vote uh, in this past presidential election, where the vast majority of the population is of color or Muslim. Uh, what is it about her program uh, that, that's attractive to residents of Mayotte, and has uh, she addressed issues that residents feel that, other, that no other political party is willing to tackle? Well, the main problem in Mayotte is my great immigration, the only party that talks about it is immigration. Mayotte voters are like any French voters, they go to the politician that caters to their demands. I always say all the other parties are free to address those problems. They are able to actually have a program that meets Mayotte's problem. Why haven't they? Ask them that question. <laughs> but I think that one also has to see that Marine Le Pen campaigned for four days in Mayotte. She came on the ground. She's the only presidential candidate that did so. Um, so it comes as no surprise. You know, her program is not, it hasn't been built in a few months. She's been working, the Front National, the, the Rassemblement National has been working in Mayotte for years. And as the situation worsens, as the government doesn't meet uh, with a good enough response to crisis in Mayotte, the migration crisis in Mayotte, Marine Le Pen gains votes. That's, for me, pretty straightforward and simple. And I really call for other parties to actually address that problem. And even if, just come to the territory, if perhaps. If not, 
yeah, well, you know, that would be a good start. But then also to look beyond uh, preconceived ideas and call us xenophobic or uh, um, anti-migrants or, you know, comparing the people in Mayotte to Trump voters and saying that we want a wall where we're a teeny tiny small island of 375 square kilometers. Half of our population is foreigners. That came in a few years. Which other territory could absorb such an influx? Which other territory would have not descended into violence? That's unfair on the people of Mayotte, of accusing them of being inhumane, of being xenophobic, when we have accepted so much. It's just that now it's reached a point where it's just unbearable for the territory and the population. Estelle Yusufa, that is unfortunately all we have time for today, but thank you so much for coming on the show thank today. Thank you for having me.